So Sam, thanks very much, mate, for having us down here. It's so good. I'm, I love what we've done over the last year, working with Sea Forest and yourself. We've known each other for about 15 years now. Such a great joy to see what you've done in terms of building out the business here. Tell us a bit more about the story and, and give us more information about what you're up to and, and where we're going with Sea Forest. Yeah, thanks so much, and thanks for your support, Matt. It's been a it's been a tremendous journey, and I'm, I'm grateful to be sharing it with MJ Bale. Um, we're in the beautiful part of Tasmania. It's, a, it's on the southeast coast of the country of the state, um, just inside Mariah Island. But what, what's so special for Sea Forest is that the seaweed that we grow, the asparagopsis, is wildly abundant and, and annually yeah. abundant everywhere else in Australia. Amazing. This seaweed is um, it's quite seasonal, so right. we only see it for a few months of the year. But here in Tasmania, in this particular location, we see it year round. And that's because it's continental shelf. So we're, we're yeah, quite right. close, only a kilometre away from the, the continental shelf. Only one kilometre out here. Yeah, just and, it's, and it gets to two kilometres deep water. And so we get this huge upwelling of nutrients that yeah. feeds our seaweed. Amazing. And then we get uh, shelter from the swell by the Marara Island. So it's really at a special, special place. So I think, you know, we, we started the business, as you know, um, you know, to combat climate change. You know, so we understood that seaweeds were a solution. I guess it, it stems back to when the CSIRO discovered that, the, yeah. uh, that a special native seaweed could have such a huge impact on mm. ruminant digestion and then meant that someone had to learn how to grow it. And that's where sort of sea forest was birthed from. And, and that's, that's the asparagopsis. The sea asparagopsis, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so a, a native red seaweed, and you, you feed just a very small amount of it to, amount of it to ruminants, yeah. um, and, it, and it eliminates methane, which is just a tremendous thing because we don't, it's not well understood, but methane's contribution to greenhouse gas emissions globally is mm. about um, is second only to the generation of electricity. So huge. It's, it's enormous, more than the it? entire transportation industry. It's enormous. Mm. We understood it to be around about 50% of the garment production in terms of the, the CO2 emissions when we did our sustainability audit, uh, audit of, of the MJ Bale business. Mm. And uh, that took us by surprise a bit. So hence we worked, you know, about a year ago, you and John O'Lobbin hatched the idea of, of, you know, working with Sea Forest and MJ Bale together with the asparagopsis, feeding it to our pilot flock of sheep down here at Kingston, which we're, we're heading to tomorrow. And yeah, what was it, 2018, I think, Jono and I were up at the Hat Head on an MJ Bale shoot, actually. Yeah, and we were um, borrowing your old Land Rover, that beautiful old, right. old yeah. fella. Yeah, um, and, you know, just just right time, right place, but, but you know, I was, tell, I was telling Jono about how, um, you know, earlier I'd heard from Tim Flannery of the Climate Council about mm. just, just how drastically we need to move around and yeah. take action around climate change. You know, I just wasn't fully aware of just how quickly mm. um, the planet's changing with regards to the, the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. Yeah. Um, you know, and Tim's message was one, you know, obviously of doom and gloom, but there was a lot of hope and there were some solutions in there. Yeah. You know, and, and for me, you know, receiving that message, I get frustrated and I get sad and then I want to do something about it. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. you know, Tim was Tim's message was pretty clear and it was that, you know, if there is, if you have, you know, creative entrepreneurial spirit and you know you care about these things and yeah. we need to roll up our sleeves and get into it yeah that's right and as a family man and you want to make sure that for your children that they're inheriting the, the right place yeah that they can have absolutely yeah and it's not just our children it's our children's children we're going to be fascinated to see how how it actually goes in terms of the apparently the sheep are loving it <laughs> it's yeah, interesting they, they, they put on a little bit of uh, a bit of <laughs> bit of extra uh, weight yeah. and, and a bit of extra girth and uh it's going to be really interesting to see when we shear them in June, how the wool comes up, what the micron's like, what the strength is like, and, and generally how it goes. But uh, I, Simon Cameron tells me that it's been uh, plenty of work, but he's, he's really loving the challenge and he's, he's fascinated by what it's going to do for, for his livestock. Absolutely, and you know, he's a pioneer, as are you guys, in, in taking the, the plunge and, and being the first you know, commercial, it's the first commercial trial with asparagopsis in the world. Yeah. Um, and so, and you know, having someone you know like Simon, who's you know really a, a well-respected spokesman in the yeah. wool industry in Australia, um, to be driving that and and um, you know paving the way for others is really exciting. And so, you know, I'm just I'm so excited to be working with both you guys, but also to have someone like Simon behind it. Yeah, I agree. He's a, he's an amazing character. He's one of the 
true experts, one of the world's best wool growers at the elite level and uh, a real gentleman as well. So it's nice. I think it's quite a good combination we've got in terms of working together. And I think everybody's just as passionate and everyone's putting you know, the same amount of effort in. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, Seaforest is here and, and we're, we're pioneering the development of a new and environmentally positive industry. But then we're working with agriculture to try and mm. reduce emissions and, and also disrupt the way we, we, we produce wool and yeah. beef and, and also milk. It's awesome. So, so we're shearing the sheep in June. Uh, there's 25 of them and once the wool's tested we've got some some interesting ambition for it actually is to make the first world's carbon neutral product so we've got our team getting match fit to uh, cycle it around we've got to get it across we might be sailing it across the Bass Strait oh, yeah. out of Tasmania into, into Victoria and then we've got a few wool processes there that we're going to be uh, cycling it around or using solar powered cars or, uh, or, or Teslas to uh, to transport some wool in, in between each of the makers to, to truly make the world's first carbon neutral you know, garment. It's, so it's really exciting that you guys are doing that and it's also a, an amazing insight I think for consumers to sort of understand you know just the logistics behind making clothes you know so it's one, it's one thing to create carbon neutral products but then you know how we're gonna yeah. get them to consumers get them to mills that's that's a really exciting I, I, I'm excited to watch. You're definitely gonna have a, a, a shift on the side on, on the bike mate so uh, make sure you <laughs> make sure you're staying fit. Okay. Part of what you're doing uh, in the future what you've just raised a lot more money for Mm -hmm. is to, to have the, the sea farming at much more greater scale so that you can deliver more um, asparagopsis. Yeah, so just inside Marar Island there, we've secured a, an enormous 1,800 hectare marine lease. Is that right? That's right. It's the largest in the southern hemisphere. And so wow. we're scaling up what we're doing. Um, and, you know, when we're at capacity, we're producing 7,000 tonnes of the asparagopsis. And that will feed, you know, over a hundred thousand head of cattle in a bait. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, you know, or, or livestock, let's yeah, say, because yeah, sure. they could be MJ bale. And the impact that that will have, you know, seaweeds yeah. photosynthesizes. You know, sure. they draw down enormous amounts of carbon. They grow very, very quickly. Yeah. But by feeding a small so amount. So you're actually getting a benefit at the front end through yeah. the carbon drawdown, and by in terms of the methane offset that you're getting in the livestock. So Huge. Double Ab whammy. Absolutely. And so Incredible. the the offset on livestock is much larger than the offset we get from from photosynthesis in, sure. the, in the cultivation side of things, we get uh, uh, we should produce uh, or avoid around 400,000 tonnes of CO2 equivalent per year Fantastic. from that marine farm. And to put that in context for me, because I don't really know, to give, give me some context on, so on that's, what that's, is emitting 400,000 tonnes of CO2. So, so one cow would produce around four tonnes of CO2 equivalent right. per, per year. Okay. And so that's about the equivalent of one car driving around. So it's, it's almost like taking 100,000 cars off the road. Off the road, in yep. a year. Yep. That's insane. Yeah, amazing. That's really, so really cool. amazing. And it's such an exciting business to be building. And so it's so like a, a half a million Australians. If there's a one car per five, then it's yeah. sort of half a million. So in theory, if you went 20-fold or 30-fold with that production, you could almost offset the, the carbon emission from driving cars in the country. Certainly. We could have a wow. huge, huge impact. Yeah. And I think one of the most exciting things is Australia stands to benefit from this first because mm. this is a native seaweed that can only be grown in Australia yeah, yeah, and it only can be used then, you know, because we care about our footprint, we're not going to be sending it across the world. Um, and so we'll be championing Australian producers. Oh, that's amazing. That's, that's, it's all about having a meaningful impact, Matt. Awesome, mate. Thanks for having us down here. So great to have you down yeah, here, mate. It's good. Let's go and have a beer. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs>